2017 is a year of celebration for Christchurch Cathedral in Stanley. The world's most southerly Anglican cathedral. It was on Sunday the 21st of February, 1892, that a crowd of more than 300 people gathered to celebrate its consecration. At 125 years old, the building may not be as historic as some cathedrals, but in a town built in only 1845, the cathedral ties into the very history of Stanley and reflects the changing tides of the Anglican Church in South America and the South Atlantic. Uh, when the cathedral was consecrated in 1892, it was the mother church for the Diocese of the Falkland Islands and South America. That was the whole of South America with the exception of British Guyana. In subsequent years, the uh, shape and size of the diocese changed more than once and we are now no longer part of a diocese as such. We are uh, a parish in our own right and we come directly under the jurisdiction of the Archbishop of Canterbury who is the Bishop of the Falkland Islands. And once inside you soon forget about the history of the diocese or the building and are instead struck by the history of its people. Memorials and plaques line the walls, dedicated to citizens of the Falklands and those that have made important sacrifices throughout the island's history. They're memorials telling their stories, here to be remembered for as long as the cathedral stands. Mary Watson was the first district nurse in the Falkland Islands. She spent her days administering to the sick and infirm, and upon her untimely death at just 53 years old, the community refused to let her be forgotten. Her memorial window fittingly features her aside her bicycle, as she was most often seen. The windows and walls of this cathedral provide a view into the history of its people. But even before this cathedral was consecrated, 125 years ago, there was another church on this site. The cathedral is, was built on a site that was originally occupied by an exchange building. The building was established on the site, it had a central clock tower and two, two wings. The east wing was, was used as a church, Holy Trinity Church, and the other end of the building was used variously as a school and indeed the residence for the governor the church was never actually consecrated, although it did become the seat of the first bishop of the Falkland Islands, Wade Stirling. And it was Bishop Stirling, with colonial chaplain Reverend Luther Brandon, who even in the early 1880s had proposed a new purpose-built cathedral. In 1886, events unfolded that gave this project a new urgency. There was a peat slip at the top of the hill behind the exchange building, uh, the peat banks had been undercut and there was a river of liquid peat had flowed down the hill It destroyed several houses, but the peat had piled up against the back wall of the exchange building. The building itself wasn't particularly well constructed. It was a weak wall and the weight of the peat um, against that wall had meant that the, the building was eventually declared unsafe and could not be used as a church or indeed for anything really, and it was eventually demolished. The government in their wisdom um, donated the land here and the stone from the old uh, exchange building um, to the congregation, if you like, to rebuild or to build a cathedral. The original stones you can see in the outer walls of the cathedral, still there, still standing. In fact, they've stood up far better than the brickwork that was added later. The foundation stone was laid in 1890 and funds for the endeavour were being raised through public donations in the Falklands and in the UK, including £30 from Queen Victoria. The site was finally consecrated two years later, although that is not when everything was completed, with many of the fixtures and fittings of a working cathedral still missing. The building lacked the tower that we still see today, and inside an organ wasn't installed until 1893 at a cost of £350, including shipping and installation. That's over £20,000 in today's money. The organ is still in place, 
and looks as it was when it was first played on the 22nd of January 1893. Behind the well-maintained frontage is another hint at the stories at the heart of the cathedral's history. The schools and doodles of those who, out of sight, have worked on the organ or pumped the bellows before it was converted to an electric pump. And the iconic sound of church bells wasn't heard from Christchurch until 1905. The bells and the clock were dedicated to George Markham Dean, a very influential man in the early history of Stanley. Although the clock mechanism is no longer in use, but church bells are still being rung. As behind the organ, bell ringers have been leaving their mark in the tower for over a hundred years. Just as when the cathedral was built, there is still much to be done to maintain the upkeep of the building. But the cathedral still stands tall over Stanley, and its strong ties to the events and people of these islands will not be forgotten and will continue to be written 